How you doing, YouTube? Matt Massa Beer Reviews. Back with yet another review. Round two. Round two, son. Um, in the form of Revolution Brewing. This is their VSOR. Not VSOJ. It was J, right? Anyway, um, the other day I reviewed uh, Revolution Brewing's Bourbon Barrel Aged Barley Wine. 2018 version. And it kind of blew my titties off. Um, but I got two variants of similar ilk. I'm sure there is a little bit of difference. This one's rye. I'm sure there's a little bit of barrel difference. This one's from 2019. The other one was 2018. So I'm sure there's differences. But this comes close to the one I had the other day. And then all the titties are going to be blown off. Yeah, it's going to be awesome. This comes courtesy of my boy Chuck. Thank you very much, brother. He sent this off. And, uh, yeah, if it's anything close to the other one, I'm just going to be absolutely flabbergasted. I like that word, flabbergasted. Uh, as far as what it says on the side here, it says, Owing two years in premium rye whiskey barrels, a uh, slightly sweet, sweeter blend of our rye wine oozes with malt-derived uh, complexities, reminiscent of maple and enough oak to build a bedroom set. Every time I think of oak bedroom sets, I think of Reservoir Dogs. Jimmy's house. Anyway, uh, with a grist comprised of overly over 60% rye malt, uh, very special old rye is uh, deceptively balanced given its super massive body. Enjoy now or still cold? Yeah, let's stop in this sucker. Let's see what she's got. Yeah, Chuck this, sent this off. Like I said, that 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 barley wine was just exactly what I love when it comes to barley wine. So I'm kind of like really curious about this one. Now I, I, I kind of toss it in there relatively aggressively. You're talking about a barley wine or rye wine, uh, with a decent amount of age on it. I did not think a head was going to get like that. I'm not going to say that's poopy, poopy pants, uh, territory when it comes to a body, but, um, yeah, I just did not expect that to actually happen. So that's kind of a bummer. Ruski. Um, we'll see what's what. Anyway, label-wise, it is essentially the same exact label, but there is a little bit of color variance, a little bit of verbiage difference. Done and done. So we'll see what's what. Let's actually pull this table back a little bit so you guys get a little better look see at that beer. And, uh, yeah, I mean, she looks a part of a barley wine. The major difference between this one and, um, the J version, um, straight jacket. That's quite shitty. Anyway, um, is color. Uh, this has a much, much lighter color to it. Now you're going to be sitting there looking on camera going, okay, it actually looks pretty dark. It is dark, but the other one had this kind of just rich, dark brownness. This has like a rich mahogany color to it. A little bit darker mahogany color. So it just looks a little bit lighter. Now the head being that big might be playing a little bit of tricks on me. I don't know, but... Yeah, I mean, she looks the part of a barley wine. Looks the part of a rye wine. Two fingers now of a kind of deeply beveling, rich, somewhere south of malt ball, somewhere north of khaki-colored head. She's got that rich mahogany, dark, dark mahogany kind of color going for it. It's good nose. I mean, we're getting a lot, a lot of the similar things here. When it comes to this based off of the uh, straight jacket version, sugar daddies all day. I mean, that is the calling card that is where they're hanging the hat on this. It's just, it, 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 you can't fake that. There's a couple of breweries that kind of finagle faking that. But the only time you can fake that is by throwing it in the barrel, giving it a decent amount of time. I'm kind of pissed off I'm not freaking out like I did on the other review, to be perfectly honest with you, because it's that good of a nose, but it's kind of like that thing, like, if you eat steak every day, uh, you know, you have filet mignon, you're like, oh my god, this is the best thing I ever had in my life, oh my god, I'm gonna freak out, this is filet mignon, and like, if you eat it for three weeks in a row, you're like, fucking filet mignon again, so it's like, I had that other one the other day, so it's kind of tempered my expectations on what is possible, so... It's more me than the beer itself. So nose is absolutely bonkers. Sugar daddy's all the way. But where this one difference is, uh, uh, the rye is obviously the difference on this one. But 
it's coming off a little bit more kind of like an Americanized barley wine because that rye is a little bit spicy, has a little bit more kind of bittering to it. It's not necessarily an, a, an American barley wine through and through. It tastes like more like a really well done, like an American barley wine, like something that would come from Hair to Dog or even like a, even like a, a Bigfoot or something like that with a amazing amount of age on it. it smells like a Bigfoot that has 15 years on it. But you're talking about a 2019 version that spent time in a barrel is rye based. That's kind of the cool trick they're pulling off here. So big, huge sugar daddy vibes, vanilla out the wazoo, a nice spiciness to it. That kind of marries somewhere between that rye and that hoppiness. That's why I'm getting that American barley wine vibe. It's huge. It's chewy. It's big. It's bold. It's going to get drank, son. Cheers. It tastes better than it smells. And it smells awesome. It's it's kind of... It's cool because... It's a spicier version of the other one. Listen. A straight jacket, the... Whatever, J. O. V. S. O. J. Anyway. Um... That was just straight, straight jazz, son. Filthy jazz, filthy blues, blues, not jazz, blues. Just like, mm, like you know, you listen to some blues and the blues just kind of fucking, like, mm, be like, god damn, like, you know, just smooth and silky and fucking filthy. Like I was talking about cutter pitches and fucking curveballs and shit like that. That's what that straight jacket was. Just like sultry, dirty filth. This is a little bit more metal. This is like, you know, like, just some crazy great breakdown. Like an old school, like, Leeway. Or fucking, um, you know, even like, even like a new school band. Like a Coheed and Cambria kind of breakdown or something like that. There's something a little bit more kind of abrasive to it. Something a little bit more technical to it. To where it's not as, as just straight up, like, knee-jerk, delicious fantasticalness there's a little bit more to it a little bit more layers not as smooth not as rounded there's this that rye portion of the show just that's what it is that's the big difference it's it's if they're not doing the same exact beer just with that rye edition both in the barrel end right rye barrels and rye in the actual malt it doesn't come off as a how do I put this? I've talked about this in the past. So there's a lot of beers that are like the same car, but different options. So there's like cars that like, okay, it's this car, but this one has a moonroof and this one has different tires and this one has a different horn or whatever the fuck it is, but they're all the same car. That's not this beer based off the, uh, uh, that straight jacket. It's more like the same family of car, but slightly different. It's like different between like an Impreza and in the sport version, or like a GTI and a Golf, um, it, 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 it's it's they're both fantastic, and they both have their own things. It's the other one's a little bit more umphier, um, but in the same vein. Man, the analogies are flowing freely on these straight jacket beers. It's fucking awesome. It's fantastic. This is by far and away the best rye barrel aged beer I think I've ever had. Let's cut to that because it's it, it, it's a very simple beer. It's not that complicated. A ton of age in a barrel. You're talking about what give it give or take two years plus. I'm assuming yeah, just like the other one. So two years in a barrel, bringing out those huge, rich, rounded, robust edges. Um, you're getting that nice sugar daddy vibes. You're getting coconut in there. You're getting vanilla. You're getting that rich barrel char, all that stuff. But all the edges have been shaved off, so it's not nearly as abrasive. But the rye is bringing that up, bringing that spiciness up, bringing that little bit more of an American barley wine kind of vibe to it without getting too aggressive. So it's very similar, but different. Again, Gulf versus GTI. And I like the other one better. I'm not going to sit here and say I don't. Obviously, I do. Um, but this is like, how do I put it? It's like, it's like saying, oh, that guy has $1 billion. He's richer than the guy that has $900 million. Be like, well, they're both fucking amazingly rich people. Like there's like, at that point you're just like, uh, like, why are we even debating 
the, the the difference. There is a difference. So there's a conversation to be had in there. But in the grand scheme of things, absolutely fantastic beer. I like the variant on the rye. So in the first review, when I did, did the uh, barrel aged straight jacket, I was bummed because I didn't have like you know a buddy Keith or or, or George or something like that to drink it with. And actually, uh, Chuck said, "Hey man, if you want to wait for for Keith to ha- be around, you can." Well, that didn't fucking happen, obviously. But um, this time I'm bummed for a different reason, and it's more of a infinitely more selfish reason. I'm really, really kind of pissed I didn't do a side by side. To drink this side by side with the straitjacket version would have been absolutely crazy bonkers. Just fucking awesomeness. Yeah. It's great. It's giving you all those English barley wine vibes, that nice rice spiciness that brings you a little bit in American kind of barley wine range. That age can't be faked. Rich, robust, sugar daddy vibes. Done and done. It is the best rye barley wine I've ever had. Value availability? No idea. I, I think... What was I told? 40 to 50... 40 to 50 bucks for a four-pack? Of the straight jacket, which comes in right around like ten bucks a can. I have no problem with ten bucks a can on this. I would have or that. I would have no problem with ten bucks a can on this either. Um, but kind of interested to see what are the kind of price point lines on this one. Anyway, and um, leave you with if you like what we like this. If you like barley wines, if you like aged beers, if you like american barley wines but with a bit of age on them and you're a fan of rye that's where this one kind of lands um it's all the parts of the other one without that extra aging and rich maltiness it's like sugar daddy extra over there but over here you get that little bit of extra spiciness a little bit of extra something something if that's what you're into this will be worth it so there you go thank you very much chuck two awesome beers super appreciative hopefully you guys enjoyed it down there if you want to talk about it massa beers if you want to check me out in the social media stuff, Beer Massive. Want to check me out in the whole podcasting thing, and hopefully you guys enjoyed our review. Hopefully enjoying a little bit of, uh, yeah, a little bit of rye barley wine awesomeness right now. We'll see you next time. Cheers. <laughs>